Hello everyone and welcome to Coding with Tom. In today's video I'm going to focus on a new feature in .NET 8 Preview 7 which is the ability to have a server-side component automatically switch to a WebAssembly component. The reason you do this is there's sometimes a delay in downloading and running the WebAssembly components so what this lets you do is have the component run on the server-side while you're waiting for the WebAssembly component to download and then it'll switch to that one. They provided an example project that demonstrates this feature. It consists of two projects, a server project and a client project. The component that they're demonstrating is the common counter component, so let's take a look at that. It actually is implemented in the client project. So if we open up the pages folder, you'll see there's a counter.razor here. And it's our typical counter. It has a current count and an increment count method that is triggered when you click the button. So this in this client project would be rendered as a WebAssembly component, but the same exact component also was referenced in the server so that it could be rendered on the server as well. And let me show you how that's done. If you look in the server, you'll see that there's a counter.razor in the pages. Now, rather than actually implementing the counter, it is a link to the other project's counter component. And there's a render mode on here called render mode auto. So let's take a look at this in action. So let me run it. So at this point, we're looking at Blazor components that are rendered on the server. This home page, this weather page is actually rendered on the server too, and it's streamed to the client. Now this, when we go to counter, initially this counter is rendered on the server as well. But at the same time, the WebAssembly component is downloading, and then it is replaced in, in position with the WebAssembly component. Now this got me thinking. If you have the state on the server initially and the component running on the server, let's say you were to click it a few times and it counted up from one, two, three, etc. Now, maybe it took that long before the WebAssembly downloaded and then it replaced the component. Would the state go back to zero, the initial state? Well, it turns out it does. Um, state is not preserved when the object is replaced. And I'll demonstrate that by changing the counter a little bit. Now back here in the code, what I'm going to do is modify the counter component. So it's up here in, in the client project. I'm going to have it initialize at not zero, but some random number. So let me add an override to the initialization method. And what that's going to do is generate a random number between one and 100 and assign that to the current count. So if my theory is right, when this renders on the server, it's going to have a number that it starts at. And then when the WebAssembly downloads and replaces it, it's going to start at a different number. So let's run it and see what happens. So right now we're on a Blazor server rendered page here, uh, which the weather is as well. As soon as I click counter, it's going to render the counter on the server first and then download the WebAssembly and replace it. So let's see what happens. 76, 30. So I was right. So it started at 76, rendered on the server. And then when it downloaded the WebAssembly and then replaced it, it changed to a new number, which was 30. Now, what happens if we navigate off of this and come back? If I go to home and then go back to counter, it initialized at five and notice it didn't change. At this point, the WebAssembly was cached, so it was already downloaded, so it didn't bother rendering it on the server. It just went to render it with the WebAssembly. So this is a really cool feature, but we're going to have to take into account state if we're going to use this properly. What you'll have to do probably is have a initial state that the Blazor server component loads, and then that state's going to have to be stored somewhere on the server and then accessible via an API for the WebAssembly to retrieve at the point in which it starts running. 
and I'm sure there are other ways that we could solve this problem too, but that's the first one I could think of. So if you have any other ideas on how this can be resolved, uh, put them in the comments. I want to go over the idea of server rendered components again in Blazor since it's new in .NET 8 and show you what's going on here. This weather page has a display of forecasts that will show a loading while the actual forecasts are loading. Now, since this is a server rendered page, there's no interactivity once this initialized async is finished. So what it'll do is wait a second and then load the forecasts. So this page will stream out to the client. Once it's done, Blazor server is not actually functioning on this page. So you, you couldn't have interactive components. Now I prove it by I added a counter to this page. So I have a click button and it, just at the end of it, I put the value of the counter. So down here I have the counter and the click me just increments it. So if I run this and that's all I added so far, and I go over to counter, or actually weather, you'll see that the forecasts are shown, but if I hit click, nothing happens. So we can make this component actually be a Blazor server component, though, and solve that problem by just adding an attribute to the page that says render mode server, attribute render mode server true. And once I run that, it's going to treat this entire component as a Blazor server component. So now it's interactivity is going to work. The signal R connection will be established and it'll be able to go back and forth and update. So if I go over to weather and then I click, you'll see that it's functioning now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.